Hi, and welcome to Comedy Recapped. Today we're going to be talking about the 1984 comedy, Hot Dog, the movie. This movie follows a young man chasing his dreams and hoping to prove his skill at freestyle skiing while winning the recognition he desperately wants. Watch out, spoilers ahead. As the movie opens, we meet Harkin Banks, a young man from Idaho obsessed with skiing. He's geared up to go down a slope, doing tricks and acrobatics along the way. When he's finished, we see him in his beat-up old truck heading to Squaw Valley, California to compete in an FIA international competition. While asking for directions, a van pulls up. It dumps out a young woman who's screaming at the belligerent driver. As the driver leaves, the girl, Sunny, hurls insults at him, saying things like his taste in music is lousy. Arkin approaches her to see if he can help. She's immediately disinterested in his help and tries instead to hitchhike again. When that fails, she ultimately admits she's heading in the same direction, and Harkin invites her to ride with him. Begrudgingly, Sunny accepts, making it clear she's not looking to mess around with anyone in exchange for a ride. While driving, she complains about his music taste and offers something different. She seems to get more comfortable and starts asking him questions. He explains that the skis are for a championship in Squaw Valley. He admits he doesn't have a girlfriend because he spent all his time skiing, and nobody was willing to put up with that. In turn, he asks how old she is, admitting she's turning 18 in April, and that she isn't a runaway. Though what she actually says is she isn't a runaway, because that requires a home to run away from. The two of them spend the night at the Siesta Motel, sharing an awkward bed together. Sunny tells him that nothing is going to happen, and in turn, they share a night where nothing happens. The next day, Sunny expresses that she was surprised he didn't try anything, that maybe she would have been interested, to which he replies that he was tired. She asks to tag along for a while with him to Squaw Valley. He agrees, but says no funny stuff. He doesn't put out for everyone he picks up. When they arrive at the next town, they stop at the seedy fantasy hotel where Harkin had a last minute reservation. However, nobody is up front. As Harkin begins to press the buzzer, we see the woman in charge sitting in a hot tub, getting busy with herself. She appears to greet the guests while wearing nothing but a towel over her hair. She checks them in and explains she's been worried he wouldn't show. Sunny acts possessively as Harkin can't tear his eyes off of the attractive clerk and she pulls them out of the room. The room they walk into is a honeymoon suite, complete with a heart-shaped jet tub for two and a waterbed. The two of them revel in the excitement of the novelty bathtub before Sunny makes her way back to the bed. Harkin offers Sunny some new, warmer clothes before the two of them head out for dinner. They sit down to a fancy meal together as they talk about how Harkin can afford all of this. Right then, a renowned skier comes in and strikes Harkin with awe. His name is Rudolf Rudy Garmisch, a three-time FIA Austrian champion. Harkin goes up to the athlete, who insults him in German before walking off. Sunny is offended for Harkin and tells the man off before the man volleys back his insult to her intelligence. Dan O'Callaghan, an ex-professional skier, approaches them to defuse the altercation. He's friendly enough, but he seems uncertain about Harkin's ability. He shares the opinion of Garmish before deciding to leave the table. The two make their way back to the motel room, where Harkin pulls out his guitar and begins to play a song. As he sings, Sonny spends some time getting dolled up, only to come out in a sweater. She plops down next to him and watches as he sings away. He strips down and gets into bed, but Sunny has other ideas, not willing for him to be too sleepy tonight. She climbs over to his side of the bed, and the two of them play a game of Ride the Dragon. The following day, we're on the ski slopes. Harkin has to qualify before he can compete. Dan and his buddy, Squirrel Murphy, watch from the sidelines. They're impressed with his skiing ability, and so is Rudy. In fact, Rudy seems threatened by him. Afterward, Harkin talks to Dan, introducing him to the Rat Pack's friends. Other than Squirrel, there's Kendo Yamamoto, who doesn't speak English, Fergie, who's presented as a motormouth but doesn't actually say anything, Michelle, who's taken, and Slasher, who listens to loud music on his headphones. Dan invites Harkin to join them for some afternoon skiing. At the top of the mountain, Harkin meets Rudy's ex-girlfriend, Sylvia Fonda. She's a knockout, and they're all vying for her attention. Dan invites her to go skiing, but she's throwing a party that evening and can't because she has to get ready. When Dan asks her, inviting himself, if there's anything he can bring, she says, Harkin. Sylvia skis off, and Rudy and his posse show up. 
Ski runs over Harkin's skis, and it almost starts a fight as Rudy demands they stay on their side, far away from him. The group is left to their own devices, and spend the time tearing up the side of the mountain on their own. Next, they spend some time at the ski lodge, reminiscing about past events together. As they do, the Squaw Mountain promoter, Fader Black, arrives to post the qualifying results, and they all make it except for Fergie. In return, Dan heads to the office to complain on her behalf. Fader says he had to accept more European skiers because they have more sponsors, and it's a business decision. The reason is no American skier has been able to beat Rudy in the past five years. Harkin drives Sonny to the park that night. At the party, Sylvia greets them, and Sonny does not like her. Jealous of Harkin's attention, she walks off. Sylvia tells Harkin she's scheduled a private tour of her place later, that he won't want to miss. Harkin is interested and flattered by the sudden attention. While Sonny is chatting it up with some skiers, Squirrel is hitting on the women at the party and continues to strike out. Harkin doesn't like watching Sonny flirt with other men, so he goes outside. While he's looking out over the water, Sylvia pops in to cheer him up. She quickly gets a rise out of him and coaxes him back to her room. The two share some Dom Perignon, bonding over skiing. Before he knows it, she's demanding a different type of rise out of him, which he supplies happily. Meanwhile, the Rat Pack resorts to mixing up their own cocktails for girls at the party. This drink causes a girl to pass out from sheer alcohol volume alone, which seems to excite Squirrel. Sunny appears again, wearing only a towel, but catches Harkin and Sylvia in the hot tub going for round two, and is upset at the sight, deciding instead to walk off. She wanders into Rudy's sauna with his posse, who offers her beer. Rudy tries to smooth things over by giving her a massage. The following day, back on the slopes, Dan seemingly can't ski. He's toted out on a rescue stretcher, but instead of being hurt, he shows up with beer. Rudy and crew show up, and he boasts to Harkin that he knocked boots with Sonny all night and well into the morning. Harkin is upset, but Squirrel tells Rudy how lucky Harkin was with his ex-girlfriend all night. Not pleased, Rudy says he'll see everyone later that night, and tells Dan to bring the rookie. Now the competition begins. Ski ballet is the first event, and Slasher goes first. One by one, each of the boys competes. When it's Rudy's turn, the judge wishes him luck, but he doesn't need it. He does well, and the crowd is pleased. Harkin comes next, and he's good too, but the judges don't score him nearly as high. Sunny isn't at the competition. She's back in the room, packing because she's ready to move on to San Francisco. When Harkin shows up to ask her about Rudy, she asks about Sylvia. They both hurt each other's feelings. Harkin asks her to stay, but she leaves anyway. That night, they hold the broom ball, which is hockey, with brooms and no rules. Rudy and crew in uniforms go up against Stan, Harkin, and the Rat Pack without uniforms. Sylvia stays to watch. After the competition, the Rat Pack is defeated, but still in high spirits. Dan takes Harkin alone to equipment room number two, where the Austrian team's equipment is stored. So they unscrew a few screws on everyone's skis as a joke. Rudy and his posse crash as their skis break while the Rat Pack watches. Meanwhile, we see Sunny leaving a ski shop as she heads to the bunny slope to learn to ski, despite us and Harkin believing she left. She falls on the slopes, and Sylvia, who's been watching, offers a few pointers. Still, Sunny's not interested and rebuffs her attempts. The competition starts back up with mogul skating. One after the other, they head down until Rudy's turn. At first, Rudy seems like the clear leader until Harkin goes down. He does better than the Austrian skier, but the judges again score him significantly lower. The crowd calls this out, and a dejected Harkin heads back to his motel room alone. We then see Squirrel going up a lift to the top of the mountain, along with a pretty young woman. She does her best to ensure he's covered in sunscreen from head to toe, and then even goes the extra mile for him, thus breaking his streak of bad luck. Finally, Sunny shows up to the competition for the final aerial skiing event. Rudy's in first, with Harkin in a close second. The two men are set to do one more jump. The winner is to take the cup. Rudy goes first, and he nails his lay tuck tuck triple. When Harkin is up, he wants to do a trick that no one's ever done before. One he seems sure of, despite it being so tricky. He nails the twister triple jump, and the crowd, along with Sunny, goes wild. They all run out to congratulate him, but amazingly, the judges give him a lower score than Rudy, resulting in a win for Rudy. 
at the lodge, Rudy and his group celebrate with drinks. Sylvia is there for all the fun, but so is Dan, Harkin, Sonny, and the Rat Pack. They're ready with snowballs and let the Austrians have it. The fight culminates with Dan challenging Rudy to something called a Chinese downhill. $40 per person. Rudy agrees. Although not everyone knows what it is. The pot is at $2,300 with everyone's contributions as it begins. They're off! They're pushing, shoving, and everyone is armed and ready to brute force their way down. Rudy and Harkin are toe-to-toe -to -toe as the two of them battle it out for the lead. Despite everything, Harkin wins, proving he is the better skier. The crowd goes wild, except for Rudy, who proves to be a very sore loser. In the end, Harkin gets the girl, the money, and the recognition. And that's going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this recap as much as we did. Let us know down below what you think of this one. While you're at it, if you liked the video and want to look into other movies with us, then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe in the channel with notifications turned on. That way you won't miss a single video. Thanks for watching.